I think part of my fascination or part of, I would say even the importance of sculpture at the moment is that uh, as a culture, maybe as a world, but at least the culture that I know where I'm living, uh, we're incredibly dumb about objects now. We don't, we're, the physical world seems to be receding. We don't know how to make anything. Our, our culture certainly knows how, it doesn't know how to make anything. We don't know how to fix anything. We use things, we throw it out. Uh, you know, I, I think that there is definitely, at least the way I'm thinking about sculpture, uh, making things, is, it is made by hand. It is basic. Uh, there, I mean, you know, if I get going on this vein, it almost becomes a kind of utopian ideal. Uh, but you know, if you're going to look at the big picture and say, like, what, you know, how can art function in this, you know, computer age or whatever? Uh, I just think it's possibly by being incredibly real, uh, and that's what you're confronted with with sculpture. That very little illusion. Uh, it's just a, a thing, a thing itself, uh, and it's it's a dumb thing, and it's you know may take a little time looking at it. Uh, to understand it. It's slow information. Uh, but I think that's very valuable. I get a visceral reaction from Mel's sculpture. Uh, most of it is pleasurable, but it's got a little thorn in the rose, you know. Uh, there's a whole psychological school of, uh, or, or postulate of attraction repulsion theory. You know, when you're attracted to something and repelled by it at the same time. Mel has that because it's kind of rough hewn in the first place. The second thing, the colors and some of the forms start to remind you of, uh, how do I want to say this? You know, some of the more unpleasant things around. Uh, 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 refuse, uh, there's probably a hint of scatology, you know, way back there. But most of it is attractive. I find it moving, and a lot of people might ask, well, gee, you've just got, you know, sawtooth edges versus round forms, you've got organic this, you've got a, something that's got rubber and wax or plaster as opposed to Japan color on a little bit of wood, you've got a truck. How can that be moving to you? It is. Like, it's, it's hard to explain, but it is. Just like some of David Smith's Cubi things are, they're moving. Um, um, and it's one of those things where if you've been indoctrinated or you've been enlightened, you can have your choice, you finally get it and you, you get a thrill and even sometimes a little tear in the corner of your eye over a piece of abstract sculpture where the forms and the volumes and the joinings and the, and the so forth go to make up this kind of hole that's moving. You know, just like you can get moved in front of a Rothko painting or moved in front of a Clifford Still, you know, something like that. It's hard for a lot of people to see and they say, well, you know, you've bought a whole bill of goods in order to talk yourself into that. I can't explain it, I can only point to it. I feel that I'm really driven to make art and I probably wouldn't bother to make it if I, if I weren't. I think. Um, I'd, I'd like to say I, um, I make art to kind of like express ideas to other people and bring images and ideas to other people, but I think I'm more selfish about it and I think I really kind of like make art just to vent those demons out of myself because <laughs> otherwise they just kind of um, clutter, clutter up my mind and my life. And so it's always been for me, I mean, very, you know, therapeutic to just kind of like get all of that stuff out of my system. You know, I think a lot of the work deals with um, pain and sadness and, and anguish and not that I necessarily experience the things, those emotions to the same degrees that I feel are expressed in my work, mm -hmm. but um, that, that those elements are there and it's, it's great to kind of get it out of the system. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, understand. <laughs> I, I see the pieces really very much as uh, these sort of like children that are sent out there and they grow and they change and even you know I'll look at pieces that I've done 10 years ago and I'll have very different ideas about my own work even as to what they mean um, 10 years down the line just because I've had different experiences and you know I bring different sort of ideas and views to them now so I understand and of course that you know different viewers bring lots of different things to them and um, I view that sort of uh, connection almost as a collaboration between the viewer and the work of art and that um, I love it that 
people come up with completely different ideas about the piece than, than I maybe intended. So it's, you know, in, in some sense, you know, I, I, again, I think it's grand with the idea of being able to communicate and sort of like bring ideas to people, but I find that it's very hard to control just how they take them. So I really love the idea that there is a big freedom that, uh, rapport that happens every time.